We ran through a side path onto the main road, and from there onto a smaller side road. I didn't say anything. I only followed Finn, who never turned around. Whoa. Look at you! You even got your own little place! Damn. I'm impressed. I couldn't... I, I, I never was able to accomplish this. <laughs> This... This is my home. Your home? You have a house. It kind of turned out this way. I see. That's nice. Inside it was a single room without subdivisions. There was a bed and a stove. I had to assume he ate and slept in the same room. It's nothing special. It's simple compared to the heights, and I'm missing a lot. I wouldn't want you to look at it normally. I wish I could just disappear in shame. What are you talking about? There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's lovely that you managed to live alone. Independence is good. I... see. He retrieved two glasses and poured water from a mug. He set the glasses on the table and sat down next to one. What is it like to live here? I want to know. Living here. You mean my life here, specifically? Yeah. You and all the others in the Sanctuary District. Is there anything we didn't understand when we came here as police officers? Finn nodded contemplatively. First of all, nobody is truly starving. We get rations from the Hounds. I get my food there, too. Rations? Yes. There's a station near the Hound's headquarters which gives them out several times a week. I see. Huh? The Sanctuary District has a market. If everyone gets rations, doesn't it put them out of business? No. Many don't use the market, but many others don't want to survive on just what they're given. They don't want to live like cattle. I understand them. The people there buy food and trade, trying to live a prouder life. I see. That's why it's so lively. How does the economy work compared to the Heights? Most things are done using a barter system. Issued money is also used. I... Finn grimaced, finding it hard to continue his sentence. I haven't found a job yet. I've only fixed some things for the people nearby, or taken things I found and fixed to the pawn shop. Pretty pathetic. Dude, I am impressed with you, man. You're killing it down here. That's why you have these tools. I see. You're very capable. No, I'm just mediocre in a lot of different areas. Look how poor I am. Let's not talk about me anymore. I want to talk about you, Cyrus. About me? Yes. I've been wondering. Why are you wearing a hound's uniform? I wanted to talk to you when I saw you at the market, but I wasn't sure it was you, given the uniform. Oh, that's why he ran. I understood then and began to answer. Well... I was assigned to the Hounds. Assigned to the Hounds? Yes. We police officers were working together, right? When you left, they told me that if one of the pair loses their job, the other is considered partly responsible and assigned to the Hounds. So I was kicked out, and here I am. What? I didn't know that. Of course you didn't. It's rare for police officers to lose their job or quit at all. I never imagined it would come to this. Oh no. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Finn? You're with the hounds because of me. It's my fault. It's all my fault. I was too selfish. I made a mistake again. 
I didn't know. I really didn't. Finn, calm down. It's not your fault. This happened because of whoever killed my parents. If you hadn't taken the blame, our positions would just be reversed right now. Like it has been all along. Either way, we'd both be in the depths. I should be the one to apologize. I got you involved in my family's problems. I'm sorry. Your parents are also suffering because of me. My parents? Yeah, the people treat them like criminals. They're attacking your parents' company as well. But... I had a chance to speak to St. Yune, and he said he'll calm the waves. Don't worry about them for now. I see. I was baggage to them until the very end, I see. Finn? Oh, sorry. Forget what I said. They're crafty merchants. I'm sure they will find a way. That aside, what about the people who killed your parents? Did you find the criminal? No, I have no idea. I really haven't the faintest idea. When you were gone, I tried to find the murderer. If I found them, I thought I could get you set free. But I didn't have enough time, and they ended up sending me here to the Hounds. If I serve well, I'm told I can be sent back to the police. I don't know when that will be, but I will try to make it back. I will find the real murderer. Just try to survive until then. Thank you. But it's all right. Don't work so hard for me. It's a waste of time. A waste of time? Yes. I'm innocent of the murder, yes. But there's another reason why they sent me to the depths. I told you. Did you forget already? Well... Whatever you do, that's not a crime I can escape. I don't want to. Please, just stop exhausting yourself. I'm not good enough to have you do so much for me. Finn. Finn gave me a sad smile and continued quietly. Oh no, now I'm just talking about myself again. Um... Your job with the Hounds can't be easy, I think. We both know Brandenburg. The people in the Sanctuary District are powerless. He treats them however he wants, and they're afraid of him. His word is law here. I don't think you and he are going to get along. You have to try and not go against him. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> it all depends. I mean, he just wants you to be safe. I mean, I can at least try to promise him to be safe. Yay. Alright. I'll do my best, for whatever that's worth. You sound like you already... Yeah. We clashed earlier. Oh. Finn sighed and I rushed to explain. It was Soxon's fault! He started it! Cyrus, I'm worried about you. Be careful from now on. Okay, I will. Thank you for your concern, Finn. I'm part of the Hounds now, but I'm not Soxon's dog. Important distinction. I still serve the people. That won't change. I will defend the people here and the peace in the Sanctuary District. If Soxon wants to make life difficult for me, I'll oppose him, but only then. There has to be a better way to do this, but... You've always been very straightforwardly clumsy in life, Cyrus. But that's part of the reason why I fell in love with you. Finn? <laughs> Sorry. That must be difficult to hear. I do like Finn. As a friend. As my partner on patrol. I trust him and value his skill. But you can't call that love. Right? I'm sorry, Finn. I can't give you what you want. 
I wonder when we're going to see things from Finn's perspective again. Ah. It's dark outside. I'm sorry I stayed so long. I'm sorry I kept you busy. I hope they won't think you skipped work. Don't worry. I'm just supposed to patrol right now. All right. <laughs> You're still as dramatic as always. You should have a more positive... Uh, sorry, optimistic. You should have a more optimistic outlook with how tall you are. Huh? <laughs> tall people, in the comments, are you more... Do you have a more optimistic outlook than us short people? I want to know. How is that related? But I guess I should be. I met you again, even though I thought I never would. I should have more hope for the future. Yeah, do that. See you, Finn. Okay, and be well. Thanks, Boo. How nice that I could see Finn again. Both good and bad had happened that day. Breakfast had started off terribly, but I had met Finn. Then again, I had also been attacked by the men. I didn't want to think about what would have happened if Finn hadn't been there. I need to practice to make sure that doesn't happen again. Perhaps I can ask Sir Inez to practice with me. <laughs> A box lying on the side of the street suddenly moved. What? I approached it warily. There's someone inside. I could see an old man clad in shredded black clothes lying feebly on the ground. His arms and legs were as thin as little branches. I could see his ribcage outlined against his skin. Oh, please, alms. Do I have anything? My water pouch was empty. I had eaten the bread Serena's had given me. I can't leave him like this. He's going to die before long. Perhaps I should go back to Finn and see what he has. I turned around and... <gasps> what was that? I spun around. The man was lying lifelessly on the ground. His eyes were white and upturned. Blood was streaming out from his stomach. He was clearly dead. It's strange, isn't it? Even in this decrepit state, they bleed like normal human beings. Sir Saxon. He was wielding a sword. The blade was red with blood. Why? Aren't we supposed to defend the people of the Sanctuary District? What has this old man done wrong? He hasn't done anything. That's why we don't need him. The rations which the hounds distribute keep these worms alive, and yet he still begs. We have no need for avaricious scum like this. Besides, he wouldn't have survived much longer. Someone had to thin out the number of supplicants. Ha ha ha! You're mad. I'm not. You are mad. You should have been the one to kill him. Sir Saxon flicked the blood off and slowly resheathed his sword. You can't just ignore him and leave. Our pride is at stake here. You should be ashamed of yourself. I wasn't ignoring him. Then what were you going to do? I... Telling him about Finn would put him in danger. I shook my head, having to avoid dragging him into it. No, you are right. I was going to ignore him. <laughs> Coward. You make a stand when it suits you, but when it counts, you're useless. I'm sorry. I hate this man so much. I had to leave before I could no longer contain the desire to attack him. <laughs> Damn, girl. Goodbye, then. Wait. What were you doing here? <laughs> this is outside the region allotted to you for patrols. Why are you here? He can't know. Calm down. Be calm. 
I kept myself from looking at Finn's house and began to speak. Good. I got lost. I don't know where I am. What a happy coincidence that I met you, Sir Saxon. Sir Saxon pondered this for a moment and snorted. <sighs> you really are an idiot. Well then. The headquarters are over that way. Get going. Okay. Thank you very much. I bowed respectfully and left the scene, feeling his piercing gaze on me. Phew, that was a close one. Too close. Here I am at last. Dinner time was already over, I suspected. I hope I can still get some. I heard someone approaching me when I entered the facility. Oh, good evening. It's been a while. I was wondering when you were going to show up. Ah, Glissade. I met him during my observation mission when I was still a police officer. I greeted him and bowed my head. He did so as well. Could you come with me to the medical facilities, please? Uh, no. I, um, have a very important appointment that cannot wait. Bye! Right now? Are you busy, perhaps? Oh, no. I just... want to eat dinner. <laughs> I see. Of course. I will arrange for dinner to be prepared for you. Please come with me. What's he going to do? I had no idea, but he had already asked me twice. It had to be important. Alright, let's go then. Ah! <laughs> Stranger danger. Please sit over here. I watched him prepare medical instruments and records and asked him if he was going to perform an examination. Yes. The atmosphere and the environment here is different from the heights. I have to make sure the new recruits adapt properly. He pulled out a syringe. Then he sat down next to me and rolled up my sleeve. I'll be taking a blood sample. It might hurt a little, so please bear with it. <laughs> Red blood began to fill the syringe. The pain is nothing compared to being stabbed. I couldn't get used to the sensation of losing some of my own blood. There. That's it. I'm impressed you didn't cry. He, cr he grinned, making it clear he was joking. I smiled back and told him not to treat me like a child. I will let you know what the results are in a few days. How do you feel right now? I remembered the altercation in the streets. I suppose he ought to take a look at it. Having seemingly already guessed it, Glissade quietly asked me where it hurt. I got injured in a fight. Could you not tell the others? Of course. Show me. I took off my overcloak and my jacket. With my back turned towards him, I rolled up my shirt. I got hit in the side, and there was a blunt strike on my back. I see. Yes, the skin is discolored. I will try to touch it. Does this hurt? A little. The bones and your internal organs are fine, then. I will prepare a salve. It should heal in a few days. I see. That's good. Take care. But why do you want it kept from the others? Well... Oh, don't worry. I won't report it. I'm just curious. I looked at him. He didn't seem to be planning anything sinister. Ha! I nodded and began. Serena's warned me against it, but I went into a deserted street. They attacked me even though I was armed. I see. How terrible. No, it was my own fault. I should have been on my guard. Then I wouldn't have gotten hurt. Please keep it to yourself. Especially don't tell Sir Saxon. <laughs> you and he don't seem to see eye to eye. I hear you clash this very morning. You know. Of course. The headquarters aren't big. Stories like that spread quickly. So you see... 
Glissade put his index finger on my lips and smiled softly. If you have something to hide, you shouldn't tell anyone. You can never know who's listening. All right. Thank you for the warning. Mm-hmm. You should rethink your relationship with Sir Soxon if you want to have an easier life here. Bravery is not the same as recklessness. I mean, that's certainly true. I'll give him that, at least. Bravery and recklessness, huh? <sighs> I sighed, feeling like my entire way of life had just been criticized. <laughs> it was disempowering. <laughs> Another person who has something to say to me about Sir Soxon. Sir Inez, Finn, Glissade. Three already. Everyone is so afraid of him. The one I understood least was Sir Inez. Sir Inez had sounded like Sir Soxon had his own reasons, which we could not comprehend. I can't accept the killing of helpless people. I wondered what the act of killing itself meant to Sir Soxon. I don't really want to know. If I knew, I feared, I might edge a little closer to him. <laughs> and I don't want that. I didn't want to kill someone for no reason. I resolved to be careful not to end up like him. We'll do our best. Hey. I spent a few days performing my duties for the hounds. My assignment was guarding the ration stations. Okay. Seems innocuous enough. Several times a week, the hounds handed out rations. Most of the denizens of the Sanctuary District took them, and there was always a long line. Guarding the station was relatively easy. I didn't have to walk around or really do anything at all. Alas, this day promised to be more difficult. Why is Sir Soxen here? Merely seeing him around made me wary. I wasn't the only one. Everyone at the station was on edge. I didn't know what exactly his job as commander was, but surely he had better things to do. Why can't he just leave? I sighed in a way he wouldn't see and looked at the people queuing up in front of the station. Almost everyone in the Sanctuary District took advantage of the rations. There were young and old people in the queue, and both men and women. And that's... I saw someone in the queue that I remembered. Hmm. <laughs> it's Finn. He glanced at me before looking down and facing the queue again. Okay, careful. Careful. He looks good. Like, he looks good, or he looks good? Girl, what you saying? Life in the depths was not easy by any stretch. The people hated the hounds. The night after I joined, one of ours had been injured. There, but for the grace of Saint Yune, I thought, and resolved to be alert. Yes. I have to be on my guard. Finn and I were old friends. I didn't want him to see me in bad shape. I straightened myself up. Oh. Sir Soxon grimaced, having seen something of note. I've seen that man somewhere. He gestured using his chin. I followed his gaze and noticed Finn trying to retrieve his ration. Uh. Sir Soxon laughed heartily. He cast me a glance. <laughs> That's right. Slowly, he approached the queue, grinning boldly. Oh no. What? I hurried after him. Sir Soxon, what is it? Finn became aware of Sir Soxon and stopped. Sir Soxon, still grinning, grabbed him by the collar. I remember his stupid face now. He was your partner, former rank one officer. Yes, he was. Please release him. <laughs> Finn was thrown to the ground. The food he'd been carrying fell on the ground. Sir Soxon! Why are you upset? I released him like you wanted. 
<laughs> he laughed gleefully and walked up to Finn. His foot stomped down on Finn's hand as he attempted to gather his food. He just doesn't like Finn. Nyah! Hey, boy. What's it feel like? Oh, what's it feel like to press down on a button too quickly? There we go. Hey, boy. What's it feel like to live among the criminals you sent here? Okay. Bong! It's such a tragedy. How could a police officer who's supposed to serve the people end up murdering them? Please stop! Why would I do that? Isn't he the one who got you reassigned to the Hounds? He's the reason you got exiled out of the Heights and kicked into this shithole. Aren't you upset? If I were you, I'd hate this guy. Even his mangled corpse wouldn't be enough to satisfy me. Ah! Ah! No, I don't hate him. I still think of him as my partner. If you were a police officer too, then you must have had one as well. Please stop, Sir Saxon. <laughs> my partner. There wasn't a day where I thought well of him. I hated having to go out together. Very well. If you lack the stomach for it, then I will finish him. Keeping him alive is a waste. I will kill him. Finn! I reached for my sword, but my eyes met Finn's as he slowly stood up. His glare told me he didn't want me to do anything. I hesitated. I ignored my vows and killed innocent, defenseless people. I'm worthless. I shouldn't be alive, but I don't have the will to die. I'm pitiful. I'd be happy to die by your hand. I don't want to be guilty of any more crimes. Please end it. <laughs> Sir Saxon spat on the ground and sheathed his sword. Damn, you figured him out a lot quicker and easier than when you're joining the Hounds. That's no fun. I've changed my mind. I'll let you live on in infamy and disgrace. Finn said nothing and left without gathering his food. I'm leaving to distract myself. Return to your post. Roger. I wanted to run after Finn, but everyone was watching me. I didn't even call out to him. Reluctantly, I did as Sir Saxon said. Phew, that was close. Today was a long day. I'd only spent a few hours with Sir Saxon, but it had completely worn me out. Vegetable stew. Three pieces of white bread. Dinner tasted well, which I attributed to my exhaustion. I hope Finn is eating alright. Someone else had made off with Finn's rations. Was he going hungry? I could bring him bread at least. I checked my surroundings and wrapped some of the bread in a handkerchief. I want to talk about today as well. I'll go there later. Let's do it. <laughs> 